the Boogosphere, again, another update. It's been a lot of controversy. Things keep going in different directions with this thing, depending on the interviews and the, the pages that I, I see. But overall, you know, the consensus is, is more research needs to be done. So some good friends, part of the team, you know, we've all worked together on this project with these alien carvings for the last four or five years. This is David Roldan. He's wrote books on Tula and investigated these artifacts for years. This man is an absolute saint. He's really helped me understand that there's more to this than what I was seeing. Even when I had doubts in certain things, this man was very honest and, and stood up for the things that he knew was right and told me the truths that really, really greatened my research and my overall understanding of this topic. You know, it's, it's taken an army of us to truly understand what we're seeing. And the Bogosphere is no different. I mean, you've probably already seen this with multiple labs in multiple people's hands trying to, again, understand what we're seeing. There was quite a few naysayers and people who came out against the Bugosphere, stating that it was a hoax, stating that it was acid etched and that the carving lines aren't straight enough to be artificial intelligence or, excuse me, um, extraterrestrial intelligence, <laughs> maybe a little of both. But... Um, Clearly what we're seeing is something that's not those things. The scanning electron scope images of this piece will be really interesting to see as this scope here is fairly powerful and is showing things that definitely don't add up. When you look inside these 32 holes that homogeneously go around this sphere, you can see the traces of fiber optics inside which is just bizarre. There's no welds. I mean, David sat there and looked for welds on this thing. Well, e even in just the videos and the, the perception that I got while I was at contact at the desert, or in the desert, rather, <laughs> it, it was it was unbelievable. I mean, everybody's kind of just sitting there shaking their heads at this bogosphere. And, w w you know, we don't have a way to construct a sphere like this in this fashion today that I know of. So whether the lines are straight or not, I would love to see someone attempt to make uh, a copy of this, you know. Um, it's gained weight. And a theory that I have personally is if this thing gained weight, documented weight, by scientists after it crashed. And I'm not talking just a few ounces here. I'm talking many kilograms. Then, then there's really only one logical explanation that I could come to of how that could even happen. And that would be if there was some sort of anti-gravitic technology in this thing. Maybe there was something going on inside of it that allowed it to reduce its weight down to the point where it could float around like it did with, with no visible propulsion. You know, we, we do know that with the work that happened in World War II uh, with the Nazis and certain uh, anti-gravitic technologies that they were attempting to achieve with mercury and, you know, gyroscopes and that sort of thing. Uh, it makes one wonder, you know, having fiber optics attached to these holes, you know, it might be a way of perceiving information and light and being able to process that light in a way that we don't necessarily understand. Light is a very, very interesting thing as it can be utilized in multiple different forms and can carry so much so fast. You know, it's what runs our internet in the first place. So, you know, you're streaming Netflix because of fiber optics and we're only at the beginning stages of fiber optics if that's logical and this is an ancient civilization. And when I say ancient civilization, the Bugosphere itself has symbology on it that has been found on multiple artifacts and pieces over the years from Mexico, from Abuelos, from Tula, from Guerrero, from the Mikocan. Um, it's everywhere down there in some way or another. And I think that's a pretty interesting factor considering that we're seeing this uh, type of device in this sphere that we do see a lot of spheres floating around in the air with these uh, gray looking beings on the pieces from Mexico. So, you know, as you'll see on some of these pictures coming up, you'll see the skull and, and one of them with the computer chip down on its chin. And I mean, there, there's just no accident here. This is a, a jade skull. 
Um, or it could be a venturing. I won't say it's jade for sure. I haven't gotten to examine the skull personally. It's hard to tell without really looking at it. You know, pictures can add gloss or luster or waxy looks or non-waxy looks that make it difficult to distinguish. But soon we'll know, you know, for sure. But regardless of the specimen, this intricately tattooed skull is, is not just, you know, have symbols of the bugosphere on it but it also has symbology and things that we've seen on these artifacts that, that coexist them with other artifacts and, and things of this time that you know it's beginning to tell quite the story the way these holes are put in here and i mean as you can see this type of apparatus inside of it it's it's <laughs> i mean it wasn't just carved with a drill it wasn't just popped in there um it's not just a couple wheels slapped together with a couple metal bowls on each end, you know. What's funny is we actually saw what we believe is a, a fake one that they made right after this came out. They were trying to sell to some of our friends and I mean, it clearly looks off. I plan on doing a, a video of that at some point. Um, once we get a little bit more information, I won't call it a fake at this point, but it doesn't seem any what anything like this one whatsoever on any level um, so that's that's a big concern the way it's carved the way it's put in there it's just not the same it's not even round you know <laughs> the fact that this thing has no welds and is round in this fashion this is this is not some simple simple thing made in shop class for sure it's wonderful to see jaime and david and geo aliens all working together on this project trying to understand this you know, with these artifacts from Mexico, it's been very, very challenging to try to get a team to come together and work together. And we all have our own mission. And what we found is, you know, these guys down there in Peru working on these Nazca mummies, they didn't think too kindly of the pieces coming out of Mexico. And at the time, I didn't think too kindly of the Nazca mummies. You know, on TV, they pretty much decimated them. It wasn't until I went to the Stairway to the Stars down there in Las Vegas where they had Fernando Cordova come. And he brought the the hand of one of those mummies. That was the first time I got to see one in person. And I mean, the, the, the scans and the, the information and the data that he had was so deep and so purporting. It was absolutely astonishing to me. And at that point, I immediately started researching these things as if it was just like the artifacts from Mexico. I treated them very, very close together because we found specifically geo aliens has a limestone body that looks just like the nazca mummies we found other forms and, and things like that the three fingers depicted over quite a few pieces so it's it's absolutely something that has to be looked at in the circumference of you know mesoamerica is north and south america here it goes for a long duration anywhere there's pyramids anywhere these there's these megalithic sites we have to we have to consider that there was an advanced civilization. I have a documentary on YouTube called Graham Hancock Was Right. These ancient civilizations are advanced. <laughs> so I think people like that have, have tried and tried to understand this and get this in front of us. And if it wasn't for, you know, everybody taking their swings, making their efforts, dealing with the ridicule, we wouldn't be where we're at today, understanding something on this level with this much integrity. It's truly a great time to be alive, understanding the things that we're understanding, and it's only gonna get better from here. The science and technology are proving to give us the answers that we wanna know with the help of AI and other instruments and tools, 3D x-rays. It's amazing what's going to come of it. Here's a couple pages from my books of these spheres from Awelos that have been documented. It's, uh, it's definitely something that was produced a lot of effort into, and these were documented far before the Bugosphere ever came out. We look forward to having another update and learning more about this in the near future. Stay tuned.